all right all right we are back in the doghouse welcome back gang uh we just did something we don't normally do normally i'm putting an online order on a sunday night for any of my supplies for the week and my lumber yard delivers them <laughs> today just for you and a special occasion i ran to your local big box store just because we're going to price this baby out the way you would price it out. Um, keep in mind this is a budget build and some of the stuff is used, but some of the stuff is new, of course. Um, we did get two sheets of uh, three eighths for the bottom layer of the floor. Of course, we got the one by fours for the framing that goes on top of that three eighths. And the insulation that will be cut to go inside that framing to take up the space. And then we got a layer of quarter inch plywood to go on top of that. Keep in mind this is a 5x8 build. Um, so you will have some scraps if you buy the 4x8 sheets. Um, my lumber yard out of Toledo I usually go through. They do have 5x5 five five sheets. And when I'm building a 5x10 camper that works out great. This one being a 5x8. Uh, and an online budget build we wanted to basically do it the same way you would do it uh, next step I will be doing some wiring on the trailer I'm going to run some conduit and tack weld it to the frame that you saw me build earlier and we'll run our wires along that we'll put in the side marker lights run the conduit for the main trailer harness down the center and uh, get into seven-way and four-way plugs and basically just do the frame wiring then we'll move on to installing this wood and insulation for the floor hey guys today we're going over the electronic part of the frame we're going to wire up the trailer do all the legal trailer lights we have side marker lights rear light license plate lights don't need clearance lights and being that this is a 5x8 uh, in the state of Ohio anyway we don't need center lights in the rear or the front just your two tail lights brake lights etc you can put extras if you want um, we're gonna keep this one basic for you guys two ways we can go about it we can run the standard four prong it's been around forever if you've got a newer vehicle and you got a seven prong sticking out of your bumper, you can always buy an adapter and run that. If you want to run trailer brakes, you still use this. You just have to run an extra wire to power your brakes out of your brake controller of your vehicle or run a seven pin. Um, you could also run an extra wire alongside this to charge your battery of your teardrop from your tow vehicle. Same with this. Um, I've done them both ways. Uh, this way is obviously neater and cleaner if you're going to run more than your standard four wires. Um, totally up to you which one you do. Obviously this one's cheaper. I think this was 15 bucks at Harbor Freight. Three dollars, five dollars, something like that. And this one was about 36 bucks off of Amazon. This has a four foot pigtail. You can get them in six, three, whatever, five. Um, depending on how long your tongue of your vehicle trailer and vehicle are comes in a neat box you can close everything up in there uh, and it really makes it nice for diagnosing problems you can actually use a test light and check here for power if you have a light out or something um, it's kind of cool uh, comes with a sealed box with rubber inserts and everything directions um, yeah we're going to get into doing this one on this square drop because we don't have axle brakes on it if if i did install brakes on this axle i'd definitely use that guy uh, we're gonna run this down the center tube using conduit now it is galvanized conduit so i will sand the galvanized coating off before i weld it in place if you guys don't have a welder using that half inch conduit just screw it in with insulated clamps you don't have to use insulate just metal clamps to screw it into your main back bar if you want um yeah being this this is an off-road i'm going to encase the wires in the conduit just so if the new owner does take it off-road 
no, no branches or anything get hung up on the wiring and rip it out. Um, there will be in the corners, obviously, a little bit of wire going here and there to the lights exposed, but not extreme. Um, like I said, if you're not welding the conduit to your frame and you want to bolt it to the frame, use there. We're going to use heat shrinks, heat shrink connectors. You, this comes in the trailer kit. It's those little clips that hold it to the frame. If you're using a C-channel frame, by all means, you could slide these clips on, snap your wires in there. If you're never going off-road and you're not worried about your wires under the camper, there you go. Um, I've done them both ways. On my classic style teardrops that I build, you've seen them in my other videos. Uh, they sit very low to the ground. I do tuck the wire inside the frame rails on most of them. But occasionally I'll use these clips and just run it along the C-channel if the frame's made of C-channel. If it's square tubing, I'll usually clip it into the insulated wires here. Um, yeah, let's get started. Um, I'm excited to start this uh, electrical part because the floor comes next, then the box, and the aluminum skin and trim, and the inside electrical and the inside stain and paint, and then she's out the door to a happy owner. So hope you all are following along. And if you learned something from these videos, hit the like button, will you please? Um, I'm just a small channel. I don't have any sponsors. Uh, in the future, we will be coming up with some shirts and some cool, crazy designs. I not only build campers and restore campers, but I also build hot rods and one-off customs. Um, I do have some plans in the works for some cool t-shirts with funny sayings on them. Um, I'm sure as this channel grows a little bit and I get more comfortable with the camera and everybody else, puts in their two cents and we have more back and forth it's going to turn into a fun time guys um, like I said if you have any comments and suggestions feel free I am all about talking about stuff um, I design these campers for the the beginner camper the guy coming up from a tent who doesn't want to spend a lot of money on a camper it doesn't need every bell and whistle out there um, just wants to take his kid or you know the significant other camp and her kid her whoever, um, your puppy, whatever, whatever you're into. Um, it's just for fun. I just want to have fun, guys. Let's have some fun, build a camper, learn from each other, and uh, keep this ball rolling.
couple of things gang when running your trailer wires. A lot of the trailer manufacturers got smart recently and they include an extra marker light tail light wire in your harness. Makes it easier to run your three wires to the back, your brown, your yellow, and your green. You can cut the red wire, in this case, up here at the front of your trailer and split it into your two front marker lights. It's just a running light wire. It's the same as this brown wire going to the rear. Uh, in fact, it's in the same plug in your four pin connector. Speaking of that, I like to leave three feet past the front of my trailer of extra wire with that fork prone on it, just going up front. Now you're probably wondering how you're gonna get this wire down that conduit. We've all fished wire before. Some of y'all have expert, expert ways of doing it, I'm sure. Me, I use mechanics wire, or I unroll about eight, eight feet of wire out of my MIG welder, and I hook it in the wire. It's pretty solid. Run some electrical tape around it. Loop the end if you want, that's to you. Run some around your wire. Go fishing. Start at the front, of course. I made this wire about eight foot long, even though our conduit back there is not quite eight feet. It'll give me a little extra grab room on that end, hopefully. Pull through this front little piece. Sorry about the hat, guys. It's like 38 degrees out today. Ridiculous for a while, first of November. So you can see our wire came out down here. Just gently pull it and watch my feed pull through. If it hangs up, yeah, no, you messed up. But looky here, we got lucky on our first try. I'm gonna pull these three right where that red wire is loomed in. If your harness did not have four wires, you could also splice your brown wire right here after you're breaking the conduit if you wanted to. Like I said, most trailer wire companies got smart the last few years and added an extra wire. Makes it really nice. Just feeding the red front wire through separate. There you have it. So, like I said, we'll run the red down here and down there to them marker lights. Of course, most y'all know green is for your right turn signal and brake light. Left, yellow is for your left turn signal and that brake light. And the brown wire will go to both tail lights, the license plate light and the two side marker lights back here. That's it, the wire is through there. Let's run it through these other pieces of conduit and we're all set. Fishing wire.
Of course, you know your trailer base is going to be your ground. We'll attach the white to a stainless steel screw up here. We'll screw it in and insert it. And then at each light, we'll ground them at a ground point. We'll screw in a stainless steel screw with an eyelet and run a black ground to each one of those. just get joined together and both go to this hot. I just did that to create a loop to go over to this side so I don't have to splice it right here in the center. We'll do the same thing over here, fish it on through. each one of these holes with a flappy then we're going to put grommets where the wires will go through the frame on both sides um, if you're wondering I drilled that out to almost uh, I think it's 3 8 hole the grommets I got uh, are thick enough for the quarter inch wall steel and they'll support two small wires going through the holes we'll also put some black goo on it to hold them all in place um, just remember to clean up any burrs you have the same with when we did these conduits uh, I took a scraper inside and scraped all the, any of the burrs in there and kind of cleaned up the edges I'm going to take a little extra step of precaution here you guys can do it you don't have to do it I'm adding heat shrink to my wiring where it will go through the frame even though there's a grommet Check the wiring anyway, we're going to just add a little extra. These frame rails are two inch. I made this grommet two and a half, so it'll stick through the side just a little bit. We'll shove it in there. We got a grommet to put on here. Green and brown wire right there will be running to the tail light, which will be up in the body of the camper. 
or also be a black ground run into that as well. Same with over here. So if we have the license plate light, which is brown, the tail light, which is brown, and the left turn signal, which is yellow, and brake light. LEDs are just five bulbs strong, and you can see they're bright. Of course, I sealed each end of that tube with some silicone just to keep the dirt daubers or bees or whatever you want out of there. Oh no, those lights will light you up at night. Alright guys, let me explain what I did for those of you who are following along and getting ideas for your own build. Um, that is a piece of plywood that is 58 and a half inches wide. Keep in mind the trailer is 60 inches wide. Gives me three quarters of an inch on each side for the exterior shell of my wall. My exterior part of my sandwich wall will be three quarter plywood. You are saying, why? It's overkill. Well, it's because I build mine so that you can stand on the roof. Um, or put a tent up there or a cargo rack or whatever you want. Tell you put another camper on top of it if you want. Anyway, 58 and a half wide it gives us a shoulder to set our wall on. It will be step wall design, meaning the outer skin will lay right on this metal. There will be an insulated frame at a three quarter and there will be an eighth inch of birch on the inside that will sit on top of this wall. Now this floor is also getting sandwiched, which means it'll have this layer as the bottom, three quarter by three inch strips, insulation inside them strips, and then a piece of quarter inch wood on top of that. Um, you can see I roughed up the frame, the paint on the frame, applied construction adhesive, and then ran self tappers in about every 12 inches. Um, what I'm going to do now is mark the frame so I know where them bolts are. So when I put the framing in to surround the insulation, I don't deadhead on top of one of them bolts. Um, that'll be the next step. Hang tight. Alright guys, all I did was repeat the process for the front half. Um, 
same 58 and a half inches wide by 48 long. If you're wondering why I left the space for my side to sit on, but not the front or rear, is my front and rear walls will sit right on that and they're only a quarter inch thick. Um, they do have the same insulation and surrounding framework and then an inner Baltic birch, but the outside isn't the three quarters like the sides are, that are going to support all the load. Um, next up, we're going to cut two recesses out of the floor. Those are going to be for in-floor storage. They're going to be about, I'm thinking six to eight inches deep. This thing's got plenty of ground clearance. You're never going to hit them. Well, you could, but I doubt if you're going to get high centered on those two. Um, it's going to serve two purposes, in-floor storage and the pieces that we cut out will lift up and there will be a leg to go under them to support them as tables. You can have them both up or one up or neither up. The idea is to get a tri-fold mattress, fold it up into a chair or two and have a table to work and do what you want to play with, whatever play cards, you know, get on your laptop, work, whatever. Hopefully you're camping and you're not working, but either way, it's just another option we're going to build into this off-road teardrop. All right, gang. She's looking pretty. Just kidding. It's just wood. As you can see, I roughed in my uh, supports, my framework for the insulation for the sandwich floor. They're just set in place for now. They're not glued or screwed, as we say. Um, keep in mind, this is the dropout section of the floor. It'll be down. I'm gonna save those two pieces. They will become the tabletop. Uh, insulation there, insulation there, insulation there. If you're wondering why this one's offset, your bulkhead galley wall will be right there. That gives you 80 inches interior, which will fit a full-size mattress. A lot of people use tri-fold mattresses in these. The idea is you fold it out when you're sleeping. You fold it up into a seat when you're not. That's the idea behind these dropouts. Your bed will fold up into a seat here. Your feet will go down into the dropouts. You'll have a table, one or both, depending on what you want to do with them. You may never use them and just use them as under floor storage. It's going to be about eight inches deep. You'll never hit that one. You might, but I doubt it. Um, be fully insulated. Guys, if you're building one of these, you may think this is a lot. It's not. You will regret not insulating your floors and walls. Condensation is a big thing in the morning when you wake up you slept all night in this thing, your walls will just be dripping with condensation on the inside. Uh, noise reduction is another huge factor. And just the overall solidness you get when you are in it or you close the door or you're on top of it or whatever, it's just so much more solid when it's fully insulated. Spend a little bit more time and a few more extra bucks and just fully insulate it. You will regret it if you don't, trust me. The first few I built back in 2003, I did not insulate. I didn't know. Um, I was just getting started building teardrops. I had rebuilt campers, and most of the big old campers, none of the floors were insulated. They had a wafer board-like material under them, but that was it. Um, a very little bit of insulation in the walls and the ceilings, but you had a bigger space. These smaller confined areas, you don't have as much space. Your body heat will pour, produce condensation inside this trailer. Just the different temperatures from outside to inside. Um, just, yeah, if you're gonna build one, why not go out and do it, just do it right. And just put the insulation in the floors, the walls, the ceiling. You'll be so happy you did it. Next step on this, cut the two floor sections out. I'll wipe these boards out of the way. Um, then we'll come back and frame that in, build two drop boxes that are going to go in there where the table legs will be stored or anything else you want to store under there when you're not 
using it as a table or whatever. Um, then we're going to go ahead and cut the insulation, glue that in, and lay the top floor layer on there. And the floor will be pretty much knocked out. Then, morning. Welcome back to the doghouse. It is Tuesday morning, about 7 a.m., and we are going to get back on this baby. Hang tight, my super duper YouTubers. standing by as well as suck it up Sally you'll meet them guys in a later episode they're already fired up and ready to go all right first off we're gonna cut them two cutouts out and uh, start framing in for that drop floor work this is actually gonna go under here like so all the way around both sides it is just to give me a little more surface area to lag my screws of the walls of the drop box into keep in mind there'll still be a piece on this and a piece on top of that it will just act as a little more support we're gonna go ahead and glue and screw these in and I'll probably time lapse that so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me screw and glue 80 holes in. Stay tuned. All right, blow hard, Bob. Let's get this cleaned off. Clock back in, buddy.
temporarily brad nail these in and then i will go back and put screws in once i put the top layer on just to sandwich everything together Except the insulation. Few ways you can cut this stuff, guys. It's messy, regardless of what you do. Um, one way is going to cut clean, of course, when you're going with the grain of the material, but the other way, when you're going cross grain, it's going to booger it up. Just live with it. Saw is all chisel. <laughs> just kidding. I just used a razor blade knife. You could probably use a saber saw on a fine blade if you need to. Um, I'm sure somebody out there knows a better trick. Just do it and get it done. Glue down the holder in place until we get that top plate on there. There we go. One, two more. And we are golden. coming back into this take a few minutes and go over the first two episodes and uh, maybe check on the history of my page and see a couple of my previous builds uh, there is a red square drop very similar to this one that I did uh, and a lot of classic style tear drops there's even a shaft that we rebuilt we are going to glue this down Put some light brad nails in it to hold it in place. This is the final top layer of the floor. Next, the flooring will go on after we cut them two holes out. This layer, once it's secured in place, will also get perimeter screws on top of the bread nails to hold it in place and they will go down through all these layers and into the steel that is why i marked 
for our first layer of perimeter screws that only went through the bottom layer went so that I don't put a screw right on top of another screw and dead head into it. Now when you're putting the top screws in, remember your wall is a total of an inch and a half thick. That's three quarters here and then yes, three quarters, just over three quarters of an inch inside, almost an inch. Um, so when you put your perimeter screws in, you want to hide, if you're going to leave it a bare floor, you want to hide your screws within that remaining inch here so that you don't see a screw head on your floor. If you're putting a subfloor or, or some kind of vinyl flooring or something in here, then it really doesn't matter. Your screws will be hid under the vinyl floor. But this way they're hid under the wall. There's no need to worry about a screw head protruding through your new floor. Let's get Brad out of hibernation, get him on the clock. Same as the screws, I'm putting these on the top here, even though we're going to cover this with some kind of vinyl flooring. I haven't decided what that is. Of course, my classic ones, I use black and white. These off the ones are like the stick with a pattern or a wood grain of some kind. We'll make a trip to the big boxer and see what they got. Being that the outside of this trailer is probably going to be red aluminum skin with black trim, we'll probably go with a, a dark oak or something for the floor. The last one I did a uh, mixture of dark oak and gray oak and it turned out super sharp like i said if you're new to the channel or if you haven't watched that video check it out it's uh in my video feed and and uh, you got a lot of good a lot of good response from that build all right guys we're gonna cut this one out hang tight and we're gonna do the same thing up here we did back there Some reason my camera didn't record me recessing all them screws in. But you can see them all the way around the perimeter there. What the heck's going on? Why are all the lights lit up at the shop? And why the hell is it dark at six in the morning? What are all these people doing here at Burger King already? What the hell is going on? Why are all my lights on? This don't look good. What the hell? Son of a... Where the hell is my trailer? God damn it. God darn it. Let's go in there and see what's going on. Great, the door's even unlocked. Oh, the shasta looks all right. Where the hell is my damn trailer? 
Everything else is here. What the heck? Rattle can Ralph, you scared me, dude. What's going on? You could have sent me a text, dude. I didn't realize you were here. I was kind of freaking out when I pulled in and seen all the lights on, door unlocked and everything. All right, buddy, she looks really good. Thanks for coming in and uh, putting in the overtime and knocking all that undercoating out for me. I sure hope you and Wicked Wanda work it out so you don't have to hang out at the shop all night again. But I do appreciate you. Thank you.